Hi, I'm Tim Krause, and I'm a project assistant in APCO's Washington, D.C. office. Major League Baseball and his Players Association have agreed on a new collective bargaining agreement. So here are the three things you need to know about baseball's new CBA from a business perspective. First of all, despite being the first major American sport since 1960, uh, to implement a CBA in 1968, baseball has a long history of labor disagreements with its players. In the 1970s, Cardinal outfielder uh, Kurt Flood challenged baseball's reserve clause and took it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. This legal battle implemented free agency in American professional sports. And of course, in 1994, baseball had to cancel the second half of its season and the World Series due to labor disagreements in a player strike that lasted 232 days. So their reaching an agreement uh, avoided what would have been the ninth work stoppage in baseball's history. Secondly, international games. Baseball's new CBA allows for an expanded international program. So in the past, baseball has had games in Tokyo, in uh, Australia, and also in Mexico. But th now under the new CBA, they can have them all over Latin America, in Asia, and in Britain. And if they have a game in, Br in Britain, baseball will lose its distinction as being the only major American sport left not to have a game in Europe. And lastly, the All-Star Game. Since 2003, Major League Baseball's All-Star Game has determined home field advantage for the World Series. This is no longer the case. Under the new collective bargaining agreement, the pennant winner with the better regular season record now will host the World Series. And the past couple years, baseball has seen a record low in viewership for the All-Star Game, so it's going to be interesting to see if the fact that this is now simply an exhibition game will impact that further. Thank you.